Yeah. Oh. Did you, I mean, you, did you get it? Obviously not if you don't know. <laughs> She's looking. I also, I shared it in um, homeschool group. I try to share it in as many places as I know. If you are joining us and you um, could please share this with any of your friends, we would appreciate that. Back at home in my home um, workstation for today, and everything's thrown off a little bit. There we go. There we go. Sharing in some more spaces. So my question that I posed this week, uh, and I thought maybe you might. If, if you don't mind sharing some of your no dragon knowledge about the different types of dragons, we can do that at the end. But um, my question was, what kind of dragon would you like to be? Because I know there are quite a few different kinds. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, and as a reminder, this, um, I will hop on here. Let's put our pictures up while I talk about this. <laughs> okay. All right, ready? Okay. <laughs> um, so uh, this is our second to last. So we have one more uh, story, which is um, a prince among prince frogs. Among prince among dragons, right? No, prince among frogs. Prince among frogs. Sorry, I just downloaded the covers because I'm going to make the uh, the images for it, and I couldn't remember. Prince among frogs. So I have um, I have that, and that's going to be our last one next week, and then we'll take a break for the summer, and then we will re-announce when we'll be doing um, this series again in the fall. We're going to try to make it a good time for um, school activities, a little bit after schoolish, but also kind of can work into schooling if you're homeschooling. Um, so yeah, again, hi, I am Liz from Capricost Books and I, we are joined by author Edie Baker who is reading from her oh. Tales of a Frog Prince. Is it The Frog Princess or A Frog Princess? The. The, okay, wanted to make sure I got that right. <laughs> I'm like, I need to look that up, but I, I have you here so I'll ask. Um, Tales of the Frog Princess and um, this is a series. This is book seven that we're reading today. We read some of the other ones in the order, not that they were written or published, but in the order of the story. So we have changed things around. So like I said, we have this one and then we have book eight, um, which is Prince Among Frog. Prince and actually we already read book nine. Yes, because we already read book nine. That was the third, second or third. That was the fourth after Once Upon a Curse. Okay. <laughs> well, once Upon a Curse, No Place for Magic. Something like that. Yes. Yeah. Um, so we mix, we mix things up a little bit. We read them in order of the storyline. Yes. So I appreciate that. So I'm going to go ahead and let you get started. We are right on time today and we've got some great viewers who have already joined us. Uh, I will say really quick, go ahead and leave any comments or questions. And our question to think about too um, is what kind of dragon you'd like to be. Uh, tell us what you know about dragons. And then at the end, our author, uh, Miss Edie Baker, will be sharing uh, some ideas of Tell us what she knows a little bit about dragons anyway, because <laughs> I know you are <laughs> a fountain of knowledge when it comes to that. So here is our cover for this week and take it away. Well, that's the old cover. And this is the new cover. Oh, uh, yes. So for the paperback. All right. Chapter one. What do you mean you're going after that girl? demanded Auden's grandmother. She set the sack she had been carrying beside the pile of the family's belongings, waiting at the mouth of the cave, and turned to look at the 15-year-old dragon. You know she's really a human. Auden looked at her in surprise. After everything that Millie had done for them, he hadn't expected anyone to object to his plans. I thought all of you liked her, he said, glancing from his grandmother to the rest of his family. We do, said his mother while his father nodded. His grandfather just shrugged and looked apologetic. Liking her has nothing to do with this, his grandmother, Song of the Glacier, replied. You can't have forgotten that she saved our lives, protested Auden. 
We know what she did, said her grandmother, and we appreciate it. But that doesn't change the fact that she isn't a dragon. Just because she has magic doesn't make her one of us. Auden shook his head. I don't understand why that's a problem. I mean, I've heard about dragons that can change into humans. What's wrong with a human who can turn into a dragon? And I'm not arguing with you about this, Auden, said the elderly dragoness. And I'm not giving you my permission to run after that girl like some lovesick albatross. Now go help your grandfather gather the rest of the sacks. We'll be leaving in a few minutes. Then you'll be going without me, Auden declared. I love Millie and I don't want to live my life without her. Auden's mother, Moon Dancer, gasped and gave her son a horrified look. In the dragon world, the elderly were revered, especially the dragonesses. No one ever talked back to them. I can't believe you spoke to your grandmother that way, exclaimed Auden's father, Speedwell. Please accept my, his apology, mother. He's young and foolish. Dragons were honest at heart and found it nearly impossible to lie. Once in a while, however, Auden wished that he could lie just a little. I didn't mean to be disrespectful, grandmother, said Auden, but I can't apologize when I don't mean it. He stepped to the ledge that fronted the cave they called home and turned to look at her once more. I just wanted to tell you where I was going before I left. I thought you would understand, but I guess I was wrong. Safe travels. When Song didn't respond with a similar farewell, Auden spread his wings and leaped into the frigid mountain air. He tried not to look back, but he couldn't help himself. Swooping one last time around the mountain-ringed valley, Auden glanced down at the ledge as he worked to gain altitude. Only his parents had remained outside to watch him go. Seeing the sad curve of their necks, even from a distance, made him wonder for just a moment if he was doing the right thing. But then he thought of Millie and how much she meant to him. She had left only the day before. It had already seemed like an eternity. His parents would understand with time. It was Millie he had to go see now. Since the hour he was hatched, the only time Auden had been separated from his family for longer than a few days was when they were trapped in the walls of a witch's ice castle. It was Millie who had set them free. Auden had been fascinated by the lovely green dragon from the moment he first saw her and had fallen in love when he discovered how sweet and good and brave she was, despite the fact that she was really a human. Dragons often fell in love at first sight. His parents had done it, and so had the parents of some of his friends. It was usually with someone the Dragon King had chosen for them, but it was true love regardless. However it happened, once dragons fell in love, it was for the rest of their lives. An's grandmother often accused him of acting without thinking first. He admitted to himself that he might have been hasty in leaving his family the way he had, but he already knew that Millie was right for him. It was true that she was human part of the time, and a dragon only when her magic changed her, but she was the most beautiful human Auden had ever seen, and she wasn't at all what he'd expected of a creature with only two feet. Brought up to believe that humans lied, cheated, stole, and thought only of themselves, he'd been delighted to meet Millie, who was as honest as a dragon and even more caring. Auden was certain that all he had to do was encourage Millie and his grandmother to spend some time together, and the two of them would get along. Two such wonderful females, females would have to like each other, wouldn't they? Dragons have an unerring sense of direction and more acute senses than humans, especially their vision and sense of smell, so it wasn't hard for Auden to locate Millie's trail. Every dragon scent was unique, but Millie's was more unusual than most. Part smoky musk of a dragon and part flavorful, flavorful undertones of a human, her scent varied according to whatever form she was in. Because she'd been a dragon when she flew south, Auden smelled more of her dragon than of her human scent. Starting out the day before would have been better for tracking her scent on the air currents between the mountains, but he hadn't wanted to leave without spending some time with his family after their experience in the witch's castle. Ann's long neck wove from side to side as he followed Millie's scent between the mountains and over the pass leading to the foothills beyond. He circled above a large outcropping of rock where he thought he detected the smell she'd given off when she was a human, but the scent was old and the storm that had scoured the mountains the day before the day, excuse me, the day after Millie arrived had nearly erased it. A short distance away, he spotted a snow leopard, which ran in fear at Auden's approaching shadow. Picking up her dragon order again, he followed it above the foothills and across the lush forests and rolling grasslands that made up much of the kingdom of Bulrush. The countryside was lovely, although Auden preferred the glittering ice and pristine snow of the icy north. The air was warmer here, too, and uncomfortable for a dragon from a land where the ice never thawed and the snow never melted. When Auden noticed a river flowing beneath him, he didn't think twice about landing at the water's edge. Drawing his wings to his sides, he curved his neck to the river and hunched down to gulp gallon after gallon of cool, fresh water. He closed his eyes in pleasure, 
dunking his head until he was submerged all the way to his shoulders, and didn't open his eyes until a change in the current told him that something large was close by. A pale face with wide open staring eyes engulfed in a cloud of some sort of green weed drifted toward him. Auden jerked his head back, certain it was a drowned human. Although he didn't want to touch it, he thought he should take it out of the water in case someone was looking for it. The current was carrying it past quickly, so he grimaced with distaste and reached out with one clawed foot, pulling it from the river to the soft mud of the shore. Auden jumped back in surprise, and the body jumped to its feet and shouted, What do you think you're doing, you brute? Sorry, said Auden. I thought you were dead. How dare you, exclaimed the young woman, flicking the dripping strands of her long green hair over her shoulder. That has to be the rudest thing anyone has ever said to me. Auden didn't know what to do when the woman hurled a clump of mud at him before bursting into tears. I know I've been looking a little pasty lately, and I have taken to floating aimlessly, but still. I said I was sorry, said Auden. I didn't know. I don't know very many humans. I've never seen one with green hair before, and the way you were staring at me, the woman stopped crying to give him a nasty look. Haven't you insulted me enough already? I'm not a lowly, smelly human. I'm a water nymph, and this is my river. I didn't realize. I know it's excuse me it's not your fault i haven't been myself ever since that horrible troll ate two of my favorite fish what is the world coming to trolls stomping across river bottoms stirring at my nice silt and polluting my lovely clean water with their awful stench as they devour my little darlings then humans clutter my river bank with rafts Auden dear didn't hear the rest of the nymph's complaints when she gestured to a raft lying on the shore only a dozen yards up river raising his head to sniff the dragon smell millie's human scent he was sure he would have noticed it sooner if he hadn't been so distracted. The nymph was still talking when he turned away and trotted to the raft. Although the logs were old and battered, the vine holding them together it looked fresh. On bent down to give the raft a thorough sniff, paying special attention to the side Millie had touched. He also found the scent of the boy, Francis, as well as that of the obnoxious troll. The nymph was right about the troll's stench. I've been talking to you, shrilled the nymph, who had fallen into the raft. Right, Auden replied, still not paying attention to her. He was pleased to have found the raft. It was a connection to Millie, something she had touched and used. I've got to go, he said as he spread his wings. Although he'd known he was on the right track, it was good to have the knowledge confirmed. She seemed that much closer now. His search might almost be over. Auden took to the air and recaptured Millie's dragon scent. It took him across the river to a land of scrubby grass and rolling hills that grew taller with each passing mile until they became mountains. These were different from the mountains that he was used to. They weren't as high, and there was only snow only on the tops of the very tallest, but even there, the air flowing past them seemed warm and gentle. He almost lost the scent at times and had to cast back and forth for it, but when he reached one of the mountains farthest to the south, it became so strong that it seemed to fill his nostrils. Following the curve of the mountainside, Auden began to see signs of humans, a rough path zigzagged down the side of the mountain, following its contours to a village on one side, a castle perched in a pinnacle of rock on the other. Millie's scent was strongest near the castle, both as a human and as a dragon, so he descended, hoping to see her. He was flying over one of the squat, sturdy towers when a, sh a shout went up, and arrows began to whiz past him. Dodging the arrows was easy at first, but then the archers assaulted, assault intensified, and he had to fly higher to get out of range. Millie, he roared, turning this way and that, as he struggled to avoid the flood of arrows. Millie, are you there? A figure seated on a broom shot from the top of the tower, and Auden was certain it was Millie. But then another figure joined it, and the two of them steered their brooms toward Auden. They were talking to each other as they flew, and he could hear what they were saying even before they reached him. Hey, Ratinki, will you look at that? said the younger of the two witches in a voice so loud that Auden thought they could probably hear her back in the castle. I've never seen a white dragon before, have you? The old witch shook her head and replied in a raspy voice. Nope. He's a good looker, though. I wonder what he wants with our Millie. He was calling your name. He must want to talk to her, said the youngest witch. Ratinki looked exasperated. You're such a ninny head, Colorine. Of course he wants to talk to her. Maybe we can find out why. <whistles> Using one hand to shade her eyes from the, run, <clears throat> from the sun, the old witch shouted, You there! and flew higher until she was facing Auden. What do you want with Millie? None of your dragon tricks now. We're powerful witches and can turn you into a flea in the blink of an eye. I just need to see her. Is she here? Maybe she is and maybe she isn't. We're not telling you a thing until you tell us why you want her. Go on. You can tell us. We're friends of the family. I'm not telling you anything, said Auden. It's personal. Chlorine eyed him as she flew up to join them. 
She met you on her adventure, didn't she? We were dying of curiosity, but she wasn't here long enough to tell us anything. Her parents whisked her away right after she got back. You simpleton, snapped Ratinky. I was going to make him tell us all about it. Now we'll never know what happened. Maybe Millie will tell us the next time we see her, although I don't expect that to be for a good long time. I've never seen Emma and Edric so upset. If she were my daughter, I'd lock her in a tower and throw away the key, said Ratinky. If she were your daughter, said Clarine, she would have locked herself in the tower and thrown away the key. Auden couldn't wait any longer. Where did they take her? Home, I suppose, said Clarine. The old witch snorted with disgust. You're going to blab everything, aren't you? So what for keeping secrets from the enemy? I'm not your enemy, said Auden. I love Millie. I would never hurt her if you could just tell me where she lives. Greater Greensword, of course. Chlorine, shouted Ratinky. Don't tell him that. Who knows what he has in mind? Don't be silly, Ratinky. He said he loves her. I think true love is so romantic. Between humans, but he's a dragon. For all we know, he might want to eat Millie. Chlorine pursed her mouth in disgust. Now who's being a ninny head? This is a nice young dragon, not some ravening beast. Don't pay her any mind, she said, turning back to Auden. Just head south over the forest and the river. Millie's mother is the green witch and a dragon friend. Any dragon can tell you how to find the castle. There are lots of dragons in Greater Greensword. You'll feel right at home. I doubt it, but thanks anyway, said Auden. That was chapter one of Dragon Kiss. Fantastic. Thank you so much. You are welcome. Um, so again, I, um, anyone who wants to leave a comment, please leave a comment in the comment section. Any questions you ha might have, if you want to purchase this or any other books, you can do that at www.capricosbooks.com. You can see our name over in the little lower left-hand corner there. Um, we have them all on our website, or at least they should be soon, but most of them have been signed. Uh, I'll make a note if they've been signed or not. Um, but yeah, I would like to know how much research did you have to do? I mean, I know you like dragons anyway, and they're your favorite, <laughs> yeah. but, um, do, how much research did you have to do to decide information about your dragons and like what they, I love that you even described like what they smell like and things like that. Um, I read everything I could find on dragons. Um, of course, I wrote these back before, you know, you could buy everything on Amazon. Yeah. <laughs> and at wonderful bookstores like yours. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but, I love you. you know that. <laughs> yes. But um, I did read everything I could find. And um, I learned there are lots of different kinds of dragons. Um, mostly there are the fire-breathing dragons. And um, there's the dragons of the North, like the, the Norse dragons and um, from Norse mythology, and they breathe poison gas. Oh, I didn't even think about that. Yes, Ooh. because fire would melt the ice and snow. <laughs> yes, yeah. yes. I did not even think about the that aspect of dragons. I think more about the, um, the wings and the legs being descriptors. Right. Right. Then there are also the Chinese dragons, but that's a whole... Um, different subset that I have not you know, explored at all. So um, besides the big dragons, the fire breathing and the, the um, poisonous gas exhaling, there are um, lots of smaller kinds of dragon relatives like wyverns. And in one book, I um, talk about an, a knucker, K-N-U-C-K-E-R. <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, and actually that was in Dragon Princess. Uh, we met the knucker. Who, um, and a lot of these, the lesser dragons have fewer legs and things like the knucker don't have wings. They can't, they can't fly and they have two legs. They look like snakes with two legs in the middle. Oh, interesting. So, but, um, I mostly wrote, write about or have written about the fire breathing dragons and Auden's, um, relatives who breathe poison gas. Yeah. <laughs> my story is it's highly flammable. <laughs> flammable poison gas. So yeah. it's not fire itself, but, <laughs> but it could when, burn. Yeah, when the two kinds of dragons work together, they're very deadly. They can make things explode. Oh, yes. And that happens um, in Dragon Princess. Yes. <laughs> yeah. um, Actually, in Dragon Kiss. That's in Dragon Kiss. Because he's looking for something. And he's always going to all different places. Okay. 
Well, I look forward to reading the rest of this and it doesn't look like anybody has any questions for today, but I hope that anyone watching will join us next week um, for our uh, final summer break or our final summer uh, reading of the Tales of the Frog Princess, book eight. And um, yeah, I hope everyone has a wonderful day. Hopefully they're staying out of this heat or catching a break from the heat because it is pretty gross where we are. Um, <laughs> leaves me very tired. Somebody uh, used a great term zapped the other day. It just zaps me. I just don't want to do much. So um, thank you again so much for joining us and everyone have a wonderful day. Bye. Stay safe. Yes. Bye.